Hi, I'm Hunter Proven. This is my second uh, tutorial, The Practical Benefits of Y-DNA. Some of my friends have told me, Hunter, it's, it's great how you are interested in genetic genealogy, but how practical is it to learn who your ancient ancestor was? Well, how practical is it to spend hours of your life watching football on television? Some people think we're making too big of a deal about our male or female lines because they each represent just a small fraction of our overall DNA. Uh, it's true. The male and female lines uh, do not represent very much of our DNA. So why are we interested in it? Uh, my answer, short answer is specificity, reach, and individuality of uniparental lines. Uh, the specificity of the relationships that can be determined reach back in time to the dawn of humankind. And the role of your individual male and female ancestors played within the broader context of ancient groups is important. Uh, because you, you learn about your ancestor as individuals, rather as your, either your individual male father's 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 male line ancestor or mother's 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 female line ancestor. Uh, rather than some vague percentage of some percentage of my ancestors may be from this area or not. Uh, when, when you do an autosomal DNA test, you can learn that a certain percentage of your ancestors from the last few hundred years were living in different parts of the world, say Ireland, the Caucasus, West Asia, or Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, <clears throat> but if you were interested to learn about your more distant ancestors, uh, you could read about the ethnogenesis of each of your major autosomal groups. Uh, ethnogenesis means how a group of people came about. Like, like one, usually one group is the is a product of two or more groups meeting together and fusing and becoming one and mixing. Um, uh, so, so you could learn about the ethnogenesis of your major autosomal groups and the extent to which archaeology and genetic genealogy uh, across large populations can explain how they formed from previous groups. Then you know roughly from which ancient groups some of your more distant ancestors came from. Uh, now, what can you get with the Y or mitochondrial DNA? You get specificity in the, in the tree structure, knowing exactly which groups are uniparental line siblings to your own, based on the different set of SNPs inherited from your common ancestor. Depending on the number of relatives you have, the degree to which you are related to them, and where you all trace your descent, it may be possible to infer a more or less approximate migration path through time of your uniparental line. This science or study is called phylogeography. At present, there are two sources, resources for visualizing an approximate automatically calculated migration path for male lineages. They are phylogeographer, which I developed, and SNP tracker. They are both updated about once a month as more people test. Uh, these tools are attempts by citizen scientists without formal training in genetics or anthropology, as far as I know, uh, to help visualize patterns in the modern distribution of various lineages. So it's important to understand the limitations of these methods, that the computed results are approximations, and that lineages with fewer samples, longer bottlenecks, and greater geographic diversity will yield less reliable computed migrations. Solving the puzzles of my Y-DNA has given me a nice healthy hobby. <clears throat> I chat almost every day with people in my haplogroup who live all over the world. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have met some of these people in person and plan to meet more once travel restrictions are lifted. Finding one's place within the world has been a major preoccupation of humans since they were able to contemplate it. It's hard to describe exactly how this feels. It's probably unique to each person. Uh, but to me, there is a sense of mysticism. Pondering our ancestors' origins through Y-DNA genetic genealogy in some ways is like a cult of mysticism. You accept that you can never know everything, yet strive to gain understanding one step at a time. If you've done a Y-DNA test 
and your male line's history seems already very well understood, then you won't really have the same type of experience that I've had with my haplogroup J2B L283. Uh, we, when I, when I started getting into uh, my haplogroups research a few years ago, maybe five years ago, uh, all I knew was uh, ancient samples of J2B were mostly from uh, West Iran, uh, and that uh, somehow our lineage had a lot of uh, early branching points found in Sardinians. And then um, people all over Europe uh, are positive for uh, some of the other branching points that happened later. So it was uh, really, really a big, wide open window of, well, how do you get from West, West Iran to Sardinia uh, and Europe? And uh, we're, still, we're still piecing this together. Um, and uh, uh, if, you, if your mail lines uh, research, origins research, seems like an open and shut case and you want a more difficult riddle to solve, you could try testing your mother's mail line or your mother's mother's. Uh, right now, I'm waiting on my maternal uncle's alpha beta STRs to finish processing at YC. Uh, his last surname is Farmer, and um, I know they came from they came from England to South Carolina, um, and uh, their middle name was Tudor. Uh, so we're wondering if there really is a genetic connection to the Tudors or not. Um, I don't find many people with farmer surname who have tested and um, in public projects. So I'm curious what the result will be. I wanted to give uh, just one quick story of how uh, I helped a, a man who came to me asking, "How can you can you help me figure out what my Y DNA means?" Um, uh, I do I do consulting for forty dollars an hour, a uh, minimum of two hours, and uh, a man from Saudi Arabia uh, emailed me, hunterproven at gmail.com, and he said, hey, I'm from Saudi Arabia, it's, uh, I'm haplogroup A, and uh, this isn't that common in Saudi Arabia, and I'm just curious what this means about how, who my ancestors were, where they were living, uh, and I said, sure, let's take a look. So let's look at the, I'll show you on the Wifel tree. This is an important place to look to see geolocated samples. Uh, he's AM28. There's only three samples on the Wifel tree that are positive for this uh, lineage. Um, to get an idea, if you already knew, uh, Havel Group A is mostly uh, living in Africa. And uh, they, they've, their lineage, most of the lineages of A their ancestors never did leave Africa. They, uh, some, of the, some of the other uh, haplogroups, uh, like uh, some haplogroups of E, uh, or, or, or what is it, DE, DE and CT, uh, some of these haplogroups left Africa. Um, but, but A stayed um, for most of them, most of them. So anyway, um, you can look at uh, a relative frequency map to just see it visually on a map. All this, this is created, this is calculated from all the samples from the y pole tree that are geolocated to either a country or a country in specific region within that country. And then these samples, uh, a, a weight is applied for each one. And that weight uh, has to do with how many total samples on the Y full tree are from that area? And so, if you're if you're from if your sample is from a place that isn't very highly sampled, then your sample is going to be worth more. Um, and that's how that's how you calculate relative frequency. So what we see is that Saudi Arabia is an out is a geographic outlier, and that conforms to what we already expected because it's a haplogroup of A. Uh, and now let's uh, looking more specifically. There's two Saudis. And, an, and a guy from Eritrea, and uh, uh, from looking looking at this from the context of a deeper origin in Africa, uh, you might just 
the, the simple, the most simplest assumption would be this Eritrean guy is a guy who represents where they were living uh, in uh, on the continent of Africa before this lineage may have migrated into Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, you could interpret it that way uh, uh, if you if you just very simply. It might not that might not have been the case, but it's it's one of the more simple. It's one of the simpler you could say naive assumptions uh, that you could make if you had no other information. Uh, we have other information. We can look at the relative sampling rate uh, uh, within Saudi Arabia and within Eritrea. There's something called the Y full sampling rate map, which I created. Uh, every month I update it. And you can see, con re relative to other countries, uh, w how many people per male population are, are represented on the Y full tree. Saudi Arabia has a population of, I'm using 1960s population. And I don't need to go into details here. Let's just say there's. 3,000 samples in Saudi Arabia, and then there's uh, nine samples in Eritrea, but their relative population is only uh, Saudi is four times as much population as Eritrea based on 1960 uh, populations, which is when like your average y, y full sample was born. Uh, so we got nine samples in Eritrea and three more than 3,000 in Saudi Arabia. So when you look at it through this lens, the Eritrean sample, the single Eritrean sample, takes on a lot more significance. There's only nine Eritreans in the entire y full tree, and one of them is in this lineage. So this this means that uh, approximately one out of nine Eritreans, uh, just going at it from this data, are positive for this haplogroup. So it really it really is a reasonable assumption that uh, that AM28 it, ancestor, most recent common ancestor that lived about 8,000 years ago, he may have been living in Eritrea. Um, we, we would need more, more uh, to find more samples that are related to, to know this conclusively. Um, so this, this, could be, uh, this could be a migration, these, these guys that are Saudis. Uh, it's possible that 8,000 years ago, their ancestor was not yet living in Saudi Arabia, and then uh, they migrated a little bit later. Um, of course, um, there's not enough information yet to, to, know, to know this for sure. But this is the kind of thing that you can learn, and these are the kind of techniques you can apply. These are all free tools. The, uh, the URL, let me move this up. The Wifel tree, I showed it in the last, the last tutorial. The heat map, phylogeographer.com scripts, heatmap.php, uh, and then you just type in the name of your lineage. Here, I'll just type in mine, L283. Voila, there's my guys, my boys. And then uh, this is the Wi-Fi World Sampling Rate heat map. It's on phylogeographer. These are all free tools, uh, but if you want my advice, uh, you want, if you want my me to spend time to help you uh, understand what your Y DNA, then um, you can uh, hire me as a consultant, uh, hunterproven at gmail.com. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial and I'm going to make more.